Good evening, and thanks for joining me. Tonight's message I've entitled, Signs and Wonders. Signs and wonders point us to the miraculous. You know, there's something about Christmas. You can feel it in the air. There's a wonderful mystery to it. With joy and laughter, the singing of carols. You can venture into stores and you can see the decorations on display. These are all signs that Christmas is near. You see the signs. The signs point to the miraculous. The signs are there to show us that God is near. We've been studying the book of Exodus, and there we see this man called Moses. Moses in the book of Exodus was given signs. The first sign we come across, we find in Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. And God said to Moses, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You will worship God on this mountain. This will be the sign that Moses is sent by God, that it is God who sends Moses out. When the task is completed, when the people have made the exodus, when Moses becomes a liberator, he will come back to that very mountain and worship. The signs will be liberation and worship. Liberation and worship. That will be the sign. The sign will be Moses fulfilling the task and worshiping. That will be the confirmation to Moses when God accomplishes what he said he will do. How will God bring the multitude of Israelites out of the land of Egypt? And who is Moses to be used for such a task? The idea seemed impossible and implausible. Therefore God said to Moses, this will be the sign when it is accomplished, when you lead out the people, when you are a liberator and you bring out the multitude, you will worship. You see, God is working on Moses. God is working in and through Moses. God is working on Moses. Moses is under construction. God is doing this to instill belief that the work can be done and that the work can be accomplished with Moses at the helm. Moses would need some convincing. He's not convinced that he is the right man for the job and he has a difficulty trying to wrap his mind around the plan to rescue the multitudes from the land. You know, it's difficult for us to wrap our minds around the miraculous. Miracles, by definition, occur outside of the ordinary, hence being miraculous. It would take a miracle for the Israelites to leave Egypt, and God knew that. Therefore, God said, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. God tells Moses that it is by his hand, by the hand of God, the people will be released and rescued by the powerful hand of God. They will not leave empty-handed either, we see. The one who gives the signs and performs the wonder 
he will bring them out by his mighty hand. The word for wonder is the Hebrew word palal, which means to be surpassing or extraordinary. This would be done by the stretching out of God's hand. You know, I find this interesting that God stretches out his hand, his mighty hand, to compel the king of Egypt to release the Israelites, thereby seeing God's hand at work. And God tells Moses that when the Israelites do leave, when they are released, that they will not leave empty-handed. They will not leave empty-handed. God says to Moses, we read Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, and I will make the Egyptians favorable, favorably disposed towards this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. And so first we see God's mighty hand. God stretching out his hand, performing wonders. And now we are given insight by what God reveals to Moses about the hands of the Israelites. When they make their exodus out of Egypt, their hands will not be empty, for they will have plundered the Egyptians. So first we see the focus was on God's hand, then the Israelites' hand, and in Exodus chapter 4, we see the focus is on the hand of Moses. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 2, God asked Moses what is in his hand. What's in Moses' hand? In Sunday's message, we took a look at the staff of Moses. And so moving on from that, we pick back up in verse number 6, Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. God moves on from what's in the hand of Moses to the hand of Moses. Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. The Lord said to Moses, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak. And when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become white as snow. God asks Moses to hide his hand, to cover his hand with his cloak. It's at God's expressed wishes, his instruction that Moses covers his hand. But no such instruction is given for Moses to uncover his hand. This might just be a small detail here, but it appears that Moses takes his own initiative and free will to uncover. And when Moses uncovers his hand, the skin is leprous, a disease affecting the skin. It has become white as snow. The Lord instructs Moses again in verse number seven. Now put it back in your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak. And when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Moses goes through the same process again. Except this time, instead of seeing disfiguration, he sees restoration. God has not only power to disfigure, but to heal and to restore. With the staff in Moses' hand, we saw the power to transform. To transform fear by faith. With the hand of Moses, we see another transformation. We see the diseased restored. And this occurs by God's instruction to cover. Let's look at the signs again. 
First, we see Moses will become a worshiping liberator. We see that in Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. Moses will become a worshiping liberator. Secondly, the second sign, we see Moses will become an overcomer, mastering his fears and controlling the snake. Third, we see Moses will become a sign of restoration. Moses will become a sign of restoration and the healing power of God. Picking back up in Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it out on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. The ultimate sign for Moses we have seen is that when the task is done, when the people are brought out of the land, he will worship God on the mountain. The wonders for the king of Egypt are yet to be revealed. But God will do it by the stretching out of his mighty hand. The signs for the Israelites for belief is transformation. A staff that turns into a snake and then a staff again. A normal hand, the hand of Moses covered and then taken out and leprous and then back into the cloak in a normal hand again. We see that transformation, a normal hand to a leprous hand back to a normal hand. And then finally, as a last sign, water turned to blood. With the last sign, we don't see a return once the water is taken from the Nile and poured out on the dry ground and becomes blood, that's it. There is no return. It does not return back to water and then back into the Nile again. And so we see these three signs given to the Israelites. Snake, a disease, and blood. What meaning did this hold for the Israelites? What meaning did this have for the Israelites? And why would God use these three things as a sign to the Israelites to instill belief? To instill belief of his act of work to liberate? This much is clear. That God is over the snake. He is over our fears. He is over those things that cause us to run, to flee, he is over our fears. That much is clear. God is over the snake. He is over our fears. We also see here the second sign is he's over the disease. God is over disease and sickness. He is the God who heals. He is the great physician. He is over the disease and sickness. And lastly, we see that he is over the Nile. He is over the life-giving, prosperity-bringing work of the Nile. God shows that he is the one that brings life. It's not just the river Nile. It's not just the water. It is God who is the one that's over these things. God shows that he is the one that brings life. And the life is in the blood. Dear friend, do you believe? Can you see the signs? Are you aware of the signs and wonders? Well, I hope that this message has been a blessing to you. And I pray and hope that you have a blessed rest of your week. Until next time, bye-bye.